Hello, welcome to the Blissful Bauble Crochet Tutorial. My name is Emily and I am also known as the Loopy Stitch. So in this tutorial today we will be making this pretty bauble. So what we'll need to do is it fits an eight centimeter bauble. You do not have to have one of these. You can make two shells I call them shells, I don't know why. And then um, you can just fill them together, put some polyfill stuffing in there and attach. Or you can just chuck any ends that you have in from all your time crochet. So for the purpose of today's tutorial, I found these baubles. Now I'm in Australia, if you cannot tell by my Oka accent. And these baubles are from Big W. They are eight centimeters and a pack of two four six eight I believe um, and they're like four dollars or something <clears throat> excuse me so um, super simple so they do need to be a specific size so we need to work out a gauge for rounds one and two and then you need to change your hook sizes from there but um, here's some I prepared earlier but we're going to make another one so I can show you how it's done so we'll need five colors you don't need five colors, but it is made using five colors. I'm using Hobby Rainbow. There we go. Auto focus. Eight six. You will need a three and a half. This is what I'm using to get the right size. Stay there, bauble. Um, for the bauble, you'll also need a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and some time for you so that you can crochet. So we're going to get started with round numero uno. I'm going to make obviously the same as this one that I've done earlier. So I'm going to follow my color scheme for that. Feel free to play around with the color scheme. Okay, make sure you get enough yarn. I talk in US terms. Um, it's easily adapted to the UK for those who use UK terms. Now I am going to zoom in and apologies if my camera knocks in a funny angle because my setup is insane and if I touch it the wrong way it broke it. All right come on focus. Are we in focus? Sorry okay all right let's get started. Yarn out of the way. I'll keep that there so you can see that. I have glitter all over my bench. Okay, so if you don't know how to do a magic ring, please chain four and join to the first stitch to form a ring. If you do know how to do them, that's brilliant. This is my way. Everyone has a different way. It's just what you know. There is no what is right and wrong. Okay, so we're in the magic ring or we're chained four, joined to a slip stitch. We're going to chain three. That counts as a double crochet. So then we're going to make 11 more double crochets or trebles if you're UK terms into that ring. I will zoom in a smidgen more. And bring you down a bit. Okay, so this pattern uses stitches, front post clusters, and some togethers. So if you don't know those terms, I suggest looking at my pattern or Googling. Um, this one is a paid pattern as well. So if you don't like the video tutorial only, you can go along with paid pattern and it comes with written instructions, round by round photos and that sort of thing. Okay, so enough jibber jabber. So yarn over, insert, pull up loop, Yarn over, pull through two. Hello, focus. Yarn over, pull through two. So we're doing 10 more of these in the ring. Okay. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so we need 12 of those in there. We're 11, including the chain. I shall be back when we're ready to join. Okie dokie, I'm back now. Now, of course, if you have been following me for a while, 
I do love my invisible joins. So what I did then is cut the tail and I literally pulled the crochet hook all throughout the loop so that the tail could come through the top. So look at my other videos for invisible joints and standing stitches because that's what I use on this pattern and pretty much all my other patterns that involves color changes. So I'm going to give this stitch a little top hat, always work into the second stitch. So this is where our tail comes from. My morning birdies are here for some food if you can hear that. All right, so just like a normal stitch under both front and back loop. Bring it around, find where your tail comes from. Now it's exactly the same spot. So it's not under front and back loop, it's down where the tail comes from. I also like to pick up the third loop and then just manipulate it to make it look just like the other stitches. Then just give it a bit of a weave in. Not too much because our next round that'll do has front post stitches. You can pull that ring tight a bit if you like. Okay, so that's round one. 12 DCs in your round. So we're gonna change colors to the light green or whatever color you're working on. I bet you I'm gonna pull the wrong. Uh-oh. <laughs> what I do, what I do. Okay, cool. All right. You know, you get to a point with your inside pulls that they start to be just blah, and I'm almost there. Okay. So this round consists of front post stitches and normal stitches. We are increasing, so we are doing it in the same stitch, but also around the same stitch. Now, I do my standing stitches without a slip knot. So for the purpose of you making a single crochet, put a slip knot on your hook and then you just work into the stitch like normal. And then it's literally a slip stitch for a standing single. So I've done a single crochet in the stitch and then I'm going to do a front post half double around. So yarn over, insert from front to back. So what we're going to do is go in between the two stitches, come out to the back and then I want to come back up to the front. So we're literally just putting a hook behind the stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Now because it's a front post half double, we just yarn a half yeah, I said that. We just yarn over and pull through all three. So that is our increase. We've got a stitch in the stitch and a stitch around the stitch. We're going to work that all the way around. So now I can show you a proper single. So insert your yarn, your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. We're making that front post half double again. So it's yarn over, insert just beforehand to the back and then find the next little hole and put your hook through there back to the front yarning over and pulling through yarn over and then pull through all three i'll show you once more and then i'll pause and then you can keep working around so single in the stitch front post around the stitch like so okay so I'm going to stop that there. So we're going to keep going all the way around, single in, front half, double around. That's our increase. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I forgot to tell you one other thing that you will need. It is a ruler or a tape measure so that you can measure your gauge. Alrighty, so snip that yarn, focus and pull through. Yeah. Alright, so I'm not going to weave it in just yet to measure your gauge. Oh my gosh, go away in. Place it on your whatever. Now I've got my son's old school ruler and I just want you to place it over the top. So approximately four centimeters, that's pretty much bang on. If you are up to here, if you're anything bigger, you will need to go down and find the size because you might have to jump a few. Or if you're too small, go up. So we do need that for this particular one if, if you are making this sized barble. Okay, so round number three, and I'm using a weight. So this round here, it's not an increase round. I know, weird. Don't ask me why. Sorry if you can hear my squeaking. I've got my setup and I keep leaning on my table and it just squeaks, so I don't know if you can hear that. All right, 
Okay, so we're making front post single crochets and a chain stitch. We're going to be working this round only around the front post stitches from round two. So it's literally, I'll do it with a knot on. Okay, slip knot. Do it your way. Because I know there are many ways to do slip, slip knots too. All right, so we're going to do the same process is insert your hook from front to back to front again. So we're going to go around that post of the front half double, like so. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so we're going to chain one and we're going to do the same thing all the way around. This round actually sits on top of the round two, so it's not an increase. So don't worry if your work is not increasing, it is not meant to. All right, so insert hook around the post from front to back, pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through two, chain one, insert around, pull up a loop, pull through two, chain one. Okay, you got that? Finish that and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so now we have finished that round number three. So you can see that it just sits on top. Slightly larger if you're looking at it from the bottom. So we've got our 12 front post singles and our 12 chain spaces. Please, please, please double check your stitch count because you don't want to get to here and go, well, I've only got 11 puffs. It's like, oh, you have to go all the way back to start again. So do not do that. Make sure you count. Okay, so round number four, a different color, color four, we're going to be making double crochet three clusters. So that's basically half of a, no, don't take this too technically, half of a double, but three times. Okay, so this round is only worked in the chain one space. I'll start with a loop. Normally I don't, I'm not. So make your slip stitch, put it on. Now, the reason why I obviously do these standing stitches is to avoid <laughs> ugly chains, chain joins and then chain stitches. Not a fan. And then especially when you have something that looks like this, you don't want to have um, invisible, I mean, you do want invisible, you don't want visible chain stitches. You want it to look pretty. Okay. So we are making a double crochet three cluster working in the chain one spaces. So find any chain one. So the beauty about this pattern is you can find any particular stitch that we're working into. You don't have to keep starting at the same point. Make it random so that if you are doing um, chain joins, if you want to, that they're not always in the same spot. Okay, so we're going to yarn over, insert into that chain space, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and come back here, pull through two. So that's one part of the double crochet. We're doing that two more times cluster. So yarn over, insert into that chain space and pull up a loop after you yarn over, yarn over and then pull through two. Same thing again, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now we have four loops on our hook. We are going to yarn over and pull through all four. So that is what our cluster looks like. We are then going to chain two. Remember, we're working only in the chain spaces. Hello, auto focus. Where are you? Hello. There you are. Okay, so we're not working in the stitch. We're going to be skipping the stitches. So yarn over, insert into the chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and then pull through two. Same again. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and one more, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Back again with our four, yarn over and pull through all four, and then chain two. So we're going to repeat that all the way around. Okay, see you in a sec. Okie dokie, so round number four is complete. 
and there we have it. So we have 12 double crochet three clusters with 12 chain two spaces. Woo! All right, so now we're going to add color number five, which is my yellow. We're going to do some more front post stitches. So this one here has front post doubles. So what we're going to do on this one is a little bit different than your normal doubles. We're just bringing it up a bit higher. So we're going to start in or around. Sorry, I'm not used to doing slip knots. Yeah. Slip knot on your hook. We're working a front post single around the cluster. So we've done a few of those. So insert your hook from back to front to back again, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. First one's always a bit tricky actually, the first couple are. So now we're going to make a single crochet into the chain space or chain two space. All right, so now this is where we make our special double, front post double. So we're going to yarn over, we're working into or around the front post single from round three. So going around that one, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. So just live with it, you'll get there. So we're going to pull up a loop. So normally when you just do a double, you just yarn over and pull through two. What I want you to do for this one is actually pull your loops up to as high as the previous round. Okay, so pull up those loops quite high, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're doing another single crochet into the same chain two space. So that place essentially has kind of like three stitches in it and that is the repeat that we're going to do. So front post single around that cluster, pull up a loop, yarn over and then pull through two, single crochet into that chain two space and then this is our sort of like a bigger, well, let's call it modified. So insert front to back around that front post stitch, pull up your loops, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two and then make one more single into the same chain two space, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull through two. I'll show you once more on this one. Insert front to back, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two and then we're doing our single in the chain two space then yarning over insert around that front post stitch pull up your loops yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and then make another single in the same chain two space okay so that one all the way around I really like the look of this round. I think it's because I oh, oh, well, they have used all the colors, um, but I also think it just pops a lot when you have the two contrasting colors over the top of each other. Okay, so 12 front post double crochets, 12 front post singles, and then 24 singles. That is our round five. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty much, um, We've got two more rounds and then it's like all downhill so let's start round number six I'm back to using color number three which is my white for this one we're doing puffs puff stitches once again I have my slip knot on my hook so we're working <clears throat> into a few stitches of this one all right but also no it's all the same one just this one now I do my puff stitches a little bit differently so if you've been following me, you know how, I will show you. So yarn over, oh, so by the way, the puff stitches are made into, <clears throat> excuse me, the front post singles, okay? So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Now, when you're doing your puffs, do not leave them that short. Give yourself enough room to actually be able to pull your hook through all of them. So when I say all of them, I mean all of the loops that we're going to have on our hook. So yarn over. So I call this a puff three because we're literally doing the same thing three times and creating a smaller puff than usual. So now that's two times. Pull up your loop, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, 
now that's my puff three so not yet but it will be yarn over and I want you to pull through all the loops except that first one okay yarn over pull through six it is and then yarn over and pull through two why do you do your puffs that way Emily well it's because the actual stitch of the top stitch of the puff sits on top of the stitch instead of to the side like regular stitches regular puffs All right get out of the way we are now going to um where am i chain one okay then we're going to make a front post single around the front post double so insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and chaining one so for this round we're only working in the front post stitches or around the front post stitches same thing again so for a puff yarn over insert pull up a loop give it a nice tug yarn over pull up a loop that's two one more sometimes it helps to hold them i don't know it's just habit maybe yarn over pull up a loop and i now have seven loops on my hook two four six seven yarn over and pull through six you might have to give your your hook a bit of a jig hmm strange and then yarn over pull through two that's just to get through those loops on your hook chaining one front post single around the front post double yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and chaining one so that is what our repeat looks like i'll be back in a moment please continue okay so round number six is complete we should have 12 puffs 12 front post singles and 24 chain one spaces you can sort of see that it slightly sits on top as well it's not uh, increasing as such because I didn't increase the stitches so now this is when we make our baubles go from this we start cupping it decreasing okay so I'm back to color number one we're doing our double crochet decreases in this round okay have it slip knot on your hook Boop. okay so we're going to make a single crochet in the puff so when I say in the puff it's under the front and back loop of the stitch so oh goodness I hope you can't hear my belly grumbling <laughs> so I'm early morning here normally when you do the regular puffs that other people do you stitches to the side I don't think it's my OCD likes it on top okay so we're going to insert obviously pull up a loop yarn over and then pull through two so now we're going to do a double crease double crochet decrease a blah, 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 blah. so this one here is cut is worked on either side of the front post single crochet so we're going to yarn over and we're going to work into those single crochets from round five okay remember we only worked in the front post stitches we're now going to work in them but over the chain space so yarn over insert your hook into that chain uh, into the single crochet yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two we're going to do the same thing but on the other side of the front post single so yarn over insert into that single from round five yarn try and yarn over and pull up a loop and then we're going to yarn over pull through two now we have three loops on our hook we are going to yarn over and pull through all three okay do that again so a single in the puff like so then we're doing our decrease so yarn over insert into that single crochet from round five yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over insert into the next single from round five yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then we're going to yarn over pull through three so that's our decrease so you can sort of see that it's starting to already go and cook itself all right I will pause that and come around back in a minute okay so round number seven yes has been complete now I wanted to let you know that this round it is okay to have quite large loops on the top of your 
double crochet decrease okay so don't worry if they are very big it's fine so you saw me it was like this because I just wove weaved woven I just put my ends in and um, no as in I finished off <laughs> and I've just popped it the right way okay so we're going to start round number eight and that involves using color number two okie dokie which I have here okay so now this round whoopsies make a slip knot on your hook please look ma I made a jellyfish okay we are going to make a single crochet in the single crochet so insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two next we are going to do a single crochet in the massive top loop of the double crochet decrease and then we are going to make a front post double crochet around the front post single crochet from round six so insert now this one is quite tricky um, I think mainly because of how these double crochet stitches are kind of locking the other one in so yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now you don't need to bring these loops up as like what we did with uh, round five possibly so that's the end of the repeat so we're going to do a single in the single a single in the double crochet decrease and then we're going to make a front post double around the front post single <laughs> from round six yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two just give it a bit of a jig sometimes it gets stuck on other stitches yarn over pull through two okay so we're keeping with the uh, rhythm I, as such uh, of just now we're building on top we're not decreasing we're not increasing we're just building so yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so we'll go and do that around and I'll see you in a minute okay so now that we've done round number eight we um no yes that was eight <laughs> um, 12 front post double crochets 24 singles and you can start to see it is starting to grow so the next round which is round number nine I'm going to use color red number three so after you do this round rounds eight nine and ten no rounds nine ten and eleven they're all the same so pretty much it is downhill from here and easier you don't have to worry about what's coming next it's the same thing just in a different color okie dokie oh slip knot on your hook please okay we are going to make a single excuse me red yarn a single in the single okie dokie so we're starting in the same spot as before but anywhere around the piece and then we're going to make a single in the single so two singles and then we're going to make your trusty front post single around the front post double and that's it for this round and the next two so single in the single single in the next single and I want to there we go and then front post single crochet around the front post double so we're going to work that all the way around single single front post single okay back in a moment yes you aren't fooled well no I was because I did the wrong color I started with red it's color three not color four entirely doesn't you can do whatever colors you like but um, because I was following the same as this one I had to do the same <laughs> okay so we have 12 front post singles and then 24 singles so now we're going to do the exact same thing with color four here's some I prepared earlier I even has a slip knot on the hook still 
Okie dokie. You silly Billy. Look at that, it's already cooping nicely. So remember I said just before, it's the same for rounds 10 and 11. So we're going to make a standing single in the single. So yarn over, oh no yarn overs. If there's slip knot on your hook, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. But you should know how to do that by now. Another single in the single. And we're going to make, you guessed it, a front post single around the front post single. Okay, so single in the single. Single in the single, front post single when it wants to, around the front post single, 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 front post single. Vroom. So, yes, this is the correct color. Just checking before I frog again. All right, continue that around and I'll be back in a jiff. Okay team, you're almost there. One round to go and then you're halfway. <laughs> so we're using the last color. Uh oh, I just pulled the wrong part. Okie dokie. So we're doing the same thing again. But first, 12 front post singles. 24 singles. Please put a slip knot on your hook. Boink. This is the last round. This is the last round. Okay. You guessed it. Single in a single. Single in a single. And then front post single around a front post single. No. No. Sometimes they can be tricky. You've just got to get it in the right spot. Hold your tongue the other way. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Single in a single. Single in a single. And front post single around a single. Oh. See, I'm kind of using my thumb because we've done so many of them. They can get a little bit tight with your tension as well and just hard to get that hook under or around. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Last one and last two and front post. Oh goodness, come on auto focus, you're letting me down. Hello, there you go. So I want you to continue that around until you finish and have something that looks like this with the ends miraculously done. All right, so I don't even need to finish that for you because I have one I prepared earlier. I actually have two because now we're up to, obviously you would have made two by now. Um, I'm hoping that you can grab a ball ball this size. If not, grab some polyfill, some ends that you have. I'm gonna zoom, no, I'm not gonna zoom out. All right, so just for, um, argument's sake I'll show you what it looks like when it's the right size so get your ball ball pop it on I want you to look at this line here so I've made my piece I'm just softly cupping that on but because this has a bit of a give in it we can actually pull it so keeping it in tight all the way around we can actually pull it all the way to that where's that line so you can see you sort of see that line there so we're going to do both sides, obviously. Now, the first time I made this, I actually joined it whilst on the ring. Uh, that's not a mandala, Emily. Um, on the bauble. So what I want to first show you is that we need to align, we'll just remove the bauble. We need to align our post stitches so that they actually align pretty. Where is it? Let me see on this one. Yeah, so that they align all nice all the way around because if you don't align it properly this is a different one um, you can see here that the post stitches actually don't align hello fluff so we want it pretty we want it aligned okay we don't want it off center 
So what we're going to do now, you might think that we have to align the post stitches up. Well, technically that's what we're doing. When I say align, let me see if I can get this. So you would think normally here is the stitch of the front post stitch and here is the stitch of the other front post stitch. But when you actually join them together, whee, you see that? They actually go, it's a bit hard to see actually, they go a little off, off. Like look where my needle is. It's this side of the thing and it's that side. So it's not even, see, there. So what we have to do, look at that. That's what we have to do. We have to turn our piece so that the stitches, our stitch from our front post stitch is actually going to go and join the stitch before the front post stitch on the other piece. Okie dokie. So we're going to do that, but I think I have to change my battery. So back in a, back in a flash. Okay, I'm back. Thank goodness. I have the other one already charged. Okay, so just a refresher. Top loops of the front post stitch need to be joined to the stitch before the other front post stitch. Okay, so I'm going to be using white. This is like a slip stitch zigzag join. A little bit different to my Splendid Serendipity, but still the same concept as you will. So I'm going to join it off the bauble for now. And then when we get to a certain point, we'll attach or join, insert the bauble. So get your two pieces. It can be a bit fiddly. Um, I do not need a slip knot on my hook for this. Oh my gosh. I'm knocking me ball balls. Okay, so we're going to start in the front post stitch under both loops and then we're going to come because we're coming into the other ball ball half. We're coming from the back into the front just because we're going to work the same way all the way around. Okay, so we've got our four kind of loops. Let me move into the middle. So we're going to yarn over and just pull up a loop and then yarn over. Um, pull through the loop. So that's like our slip stitch join, part of it. Then we're going to chain one. Okay, can be a bit fiddly because there's nothing inside. You can actually squish one of them the wrong way for now, just so that your stitches align a little bit better. I'm losing my yarn. Okay, so we're going to continue. We haven't really even started, but that's okay. So insert under both loops of the next stitch of the front one and then we're going to insert I'm trying to show you with the yarn out the way into the front and back loops of the corresponding stitch yarn over pull up a loop and just pull through and then we're going to chain one this is how we get that zigzag look so insert now if you align them pretty pretty well. You should be able to just insert through all four at the same time. So do that. Pull up your loop, pull through and chaining one. You'll see that I'll give it a little bit of a tug just for the tension. It's just a habit. You'll, you, you should probably get there towards the end too, unless you already know how to do this join. Insert through those four loops, pull up a loop, Sorry, I'm moving. <laughs> Pull through, chaining one. Insert again. Pull up a loop. Pull through, chaining one. And you can sort of see, a bit hard with these colours, but it's forming a little bit of a zigzag. So insert, pull up a loop, pull through. You can see that one is a bit loose. That's okay. Chain one into the next. Now you obviously don't want to leave it too late for adding your bauble if you are adding a bauble. So I'm going to show you how it looks now. I'm going to unpop my middle so you can see here. Oh my goodness that our stitches align. We're going to pop our bauble in. Whee. Now, 
sometimes you might actually prefer to join this way. It can be a little bit testing on your hands. This is what it looks like joining this way, okay? So it's a bit different. I hope you can see because of my yarn tension. So inserting under both front and back loops again, then you're going to pick up the next. There's a bit more twisting and whatnot going around because you have that ball ball. So that's the pull through and then you're going to chain one. So insert, get around, there and there, chaining one. Insert, Blah. that's what happens quite a lot when you do it this way. Insert, pull up a loop. This is how I did it the first time. <laughs> I like finding ways to do things better. You become more efficient and you have more time to crochet more. Okay, so you think, oh crikey, the top of the ball ball's just there. What do I do? Eh, you just slide it around. What top of the ball ball? Okay, so all the way around, hello. I do recommend doing as much as you can not on the bauble. So I'm just going to pop mine out. Oh, goodbye bauble. And then just continue. Also too, a pointer is if you are doing it with the bauble, you, your stitches will change a little bit because you're keeping the bauble inside. It's not as tight, whereas if you're joining the joins not as tight is what I mean. If you're joining this way, um, your stitch could just be a little bit tighter because you don't have that bauble in there, if that makes any sense. Kind of does in my head, but I might not be um, vocalizing it correctly. So explaining is probably the word, vocalizing. Okay, so we'll give it a bit of a test again. Hello, I'm a bauble eater. Oh dear. Who wants boring crochet videos? Not me. Okay, I do do mine as if I'm talking to you and I'm here in person. Eee. Okay, so we've still got a bit of way to go. That's okay. You could probably, mind you, it wasn't too hard to get the bauble in. I'm just going to leave it there for now. And then just finish this off. Under through chain one there we go under both can be a bit tricky depending on how you hold the yarn oh you will notice i've changed the hold come on autofocus hello there we go you will notice i've changed the hold of my hook um for this particular oh i missed the chain stitch did i did too, you sneaky little thing. I've changed um, my hook hold for this particular method because um, it's awkward to do it any other way, really. So just like this, all the way through, making sure you don't forget the chain stitch like I did. Bit more movement, hence while you might not be able to see me as much on the screen. All right, so now we're getting down to business. Down, let's get down to business. All right, we are going to keep pushing that top of your ball ball all the way around, okay? So as far away from you as possible. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to come back when I'm there so you don't have to see me wasting your time. Okay, so we've come to pretty much the end. I just want to show you what I do when we get there. I've got three stitches left to go. I've done my chain stitch. We're going to go insert. Now this here, it's actually pretty easy at this part. It's probably easier than when it's further away. Chaining one into that second last stitch. Now it's entirely up to you if you want to try and squeeze that last one in. Come here. You can do it. There we go. Chain one. So <laughs> Yeah, it's up to you if you want to have it really tight, but let's just see what it looks like. If you can get it in there. It's a bit, this is the tricky part. There we go. Not as hard as you think. 
All right, so I've just finished that last slip stitch off. I'm not going to chain one. Stay. What I'm going to do is cut my tail, just pull that through, Bing! like so, okay? So there are literally no unworked stitches. It's all the way around. I'm going to insert that tail onto my weight up and insert that tail onto my hook. Why aren't you participating? All right, there we go. Do you want to know what's really good about this piece? Is that you can just weave that end in. I recommend coming down the same spot where you just finished. So you can just, if you prefer, you can be technical with your weaving ins. But what I like to do is just pop it in the same stitch where it came from and just pop it out there. Give it a good tug. Is this not going to come undone because it's a decoration and accessory? Pull this tail tight so when you cut it, it falls back in there. Same thing with your beginning tail. Blah, blah. Thread that on there like so. Instead of coming from where this one came from, I'm going to actually insert it into the stitch on the other side. Or just beforehand, I'm just going to go beforehand, so in the join. And I'm going to give you wherever you're going to come out. Give that a nice tug. And pulling that chain, uh, pulling that tail. Cut it and it'll duck away and hide. Why are you dirty? All right. <gasps> there is our Christmas bauble. I will zoom out. Though nope, that is me moving my camera. Beep. Wrong way. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. Stay. Don't move. Okay. So here our bauble is all complete now. It's not as hard as what you think, is it really? I don't think so. But um, they do make some beautiful Christmas decorations and gifts. Like, who doesn't like, like, look, you can choose your own colour scheme for your trees. But um, I really do think they look pretty and easy to give to people as well. So make your piece up, two of those, and a ball ball. If you don't have the ball ball, that's okay. So I really hope you enjoyed my blissful ball ball tutorial. And... Um, Make sure you like and subscribe because I am slowly releasing new material as um, as I get more time. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have fun making the blissful balls. Pop a comment in the below if you have made them. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye. Mwah.